Welcome to Rethink with Reed. I'm Reed Kilmer. Today's interview is going to cover love and relationships. A lot of us get into arguments with our significant others and we don't understand why they see things the way they do or why they do them. And sometimes it has to do with how they grew up or the way they see things through a different lens that we just don't quite understand. Now, what's so great about our interview today with counselor and therapist, Gail Williams, she's going to peel back that layer that gives you tools to work with your partner and try to understand why they see things the way they do. What are the key things that successful couples do to keep their, their marriage or the relationship going through different phases of their life. So stick with us so you can learn some tips and tools from Gail on how to work on your relationship and keep it happy for years to come. So Gail, before we get going here, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. Mm -hmm. uh, would you share a little bit about your background, your career, and the different th types of work you do? Absolutely. So I'm a licensed mental health practitioner in private practice, and I've been married for 24 years. So not only do I have the clinical experience, but I have practical experience over 24 years of managing a relationship with a partner. Um, so I'm excited to bring that to the table as well. When there's communications breaking down in a relationship, mm -hmm. it seems like there's a different way to look at things from the male's perspective and the female's perspective. And there always just seems to be like a gap where you yes. can't quite understand the other person's point of view. Mm -hmm. Would you explain a little bit about whether that's just our individual view on things or how we're kind of brought up and how we're supposed to be like a man or a woman in, in America? Sure. I think there's two answers to that. One is absolutely your upbringing, your history, your experiences can influence the conversation or the perception of how the communication is going. And then some of it is based on gender and age as well. We have to consider all of those things in conjunction um, as we're looking at those communication problems. Generally what it comes down to is one party or both parties feel like they're not being heard. Okay, and so what would you recommend for people to kind of bridge that gap? And bridge that about? gap. Well, initially, I always tell couples when I'm working with them, if they haven't done so already, before things shake and before things happen, come up with a proactive plan. And so if you think about organizations, all organizations have a mission statement, mm -hmm. generally. And what do you think that mission statement is for? What does that do? To reach success. Yeah. To have a good outcome. You have a common goal. You know where you're going. Mm -hmm. And then anytime an employee gets off track, what do you do? Kind of reevaluate things. Reevaluate. Let's go back to the mission statement. Are we doing what we set out to do? So I encourage couples to get together and come up with your own mission statement as a couple. What is it that we're going to have as our fundamental value in this relationship? And that way, when communication starts to break down, you can say, okay, let's go back to the drawing board. Are we getting to our fundamentals and our mission? And that kind of takes out the emotion because a lot of times when we're frustrated in communication, the emotion's what drives the conversation yeah. versus what's actually really important. So it seems like it's easier said than done yeah. when problems arise or maybe someone's not being as vocal or as open mm -hmm. as you would hope they would be for a conversation like this. What kind of things do you address then? Okay, ask that question again. So if somebody is not open to having that conversation or mm -hmm. you know, maybe there's some kind of block where something's happened in the past, say like a, a cheating couple or I mean, sure. alcoholism is in the mm -hmm. the system or something like that, Sure. what kinds of things do you have to do to kind of push that forward? Move if, them if forward. There's a, if there's that communication just wall there that they're not going to open up. Absolutely. So are you talking about in the context of couples therapy when they're in the office or you're talking about in general when they're on their own and how do you? If they're on their own. Yes. Maybe, maybe therapy is the answer that comes down to it, but right. that's kind of what I was looking for. Yeah. And I think if there's bigger problems where there's a lot of underlying issues that haven't been resolved and the two parties don't know how to communicate, sometimes you do need a mediator because it's hard to control your emotions. It's, it's like anything with a kid, you know, if you have a child in the store and they're throwing a temp temper tantrum, mm -hmm. you can't stop them and logically say, you know, we just can't do that today. <laughs> you have to address the emotion first and sometimes having someone who's a mediator, someone who's neutral, is easier to bridge that gap for them. Uh, so Gail, I feel like sometimes people, if there's something going on in the relationship, they're looking for what they want rather than seeking what the other person wants. And sometimes that can cause an issue and the communication really isn't clear there. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that in past clients before, current clients? Absolutely. 
And I think universally and generally, we all want the same thing, men and women, mm -hmm. love, acceptance, and connection. The problem is that people don't understand there's different ways about how that happens or how you might receive love, acceptance, and connection versus how I might. And so it's just having that open mind to say, okay, tell me a little bit about what that looks like and feels like for you. Just because it's not how I would want to receive it doesn't mean that that's not okay. Mm -hmm. It's respecting that other person's opinions and their feelings and, and vice versa. And again, if the two can come together and have those two insights, then that relationship can really fl flourish. Okay. So with some of the clients that you've worked with, other than setting a mission statement out, what are some of the other successful things that they practice on to continue relationship going? Yes, so I'm a big proponent of Gary Chapman's five love languages. I don't know if you've heard of that. Yep. But it really is finding out what couples individually or what each individual finds important to them. So it's how do they feel love and acceptance? Again, it goes to age and gender, but it also goes to life experiences and all of those things. So if my love language is, I like uh, words of affirmation and to be told, you know, you're special, you're important, but maybe my husband's, who it's not his, <laughs> his is more acts of service. He likes to do things. And I have to recognize when he does things for me, that's his way of showing love. At the same time, I would expect him to say, well, I do need to give her more words of affirmation as well. And then we have to switch and make sure that I'm paying attention to the way that I show affection and love to him as well. So it's really talking those things out as a couple. What is really important to you? We have to learn more about each other, even if we've been, I mean, I've been married 24 years and I'm still finding out things every now and then. <laughs> like, you didn't know that or that's how you would handle that? So it's a matter of just continuing the conversation of learning about one another and, and your needs and interests. So you've gone through a couple different phases of life and marriage in 24 years, I'm assuming. What are your other main keys to getting through the different phases, say, um, first children, uh, the middle age, maybe middle age crises, those kinds of things. Yeah, it's, it's really tough because we did raise three children mm -hmm. and we still have one at home. The boys are older and they're in their 20s and off on their own, but going through that process of the adolescent years and teen years, and my husband and I both worked at youth care organizations with troubled children and at-risk children, but when you have to deal with your own, it's a whole different story. Okay. It comes down to making sure we're on the same page. What is the common ground here? What are we trying to accomplish? We want our kids to be successful and happy. We want them to be respectful and responsible. And then we come together with communicating on how do we accomplish that goal. And so it also, it always comes down to communicating openly and making sure you're on the same page. I think the common saying is you're going to marry someone that looks like your father or your mother. <laughs> yeah. But then I've noticed my friend, he is with a woman who's part Korean. So it's uh -huh. like, oh, she it doesn't look anything like her mom. Right. But the exact same personality. Behavior. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh. Yeah. And sometimes men will marry, you know, their mothers, but sometimes men will marry women that act like their fathers. It's behavior. It's they're attracted to that same thing, whether it's good or bad, it's just familiar and they don't realize it until they're in it. And then they're like, whoa, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. And it's just taking that step back and realizing where that originated from and whether or not you want to keep parts of that or whether or not you want to change parts of it. You know, any other things that you would like to include that people could use or take away from, say, an interview like this to uh, better their relationship? Better. Quality time um, is one. And I always tell people, if you want to get good at something, what do you have to do? Practice. You to practice. You have to spend time doing it. You have to invest energy into it. The same thing with relationships. You need to spend time, quality time. Doesn't necessarily have to be all the time, but just quality time, getting to know each other, playing games like trivia games and asking questions about, you know, how would you handle this situation? Mm. And laughing and finding out, wow, I never thought, I thought I knew you, but I didn't. <laughs> the Gottman Institute, they are amazing. Um, John and Julie Gottman. And they have an app on the phone. It's called uh, the Gottman Card Deck. And it has several different components in terms of just, just strengthening the relationship and getting to know each other a little bit more. And it has all kinds of trivia questions for you to ask your significant other, um, to challenge each other, and to do fun things together, too. Oh, okay. So definitely the quality. Gottman app? Gottman, yes. G-O-T-T-M-A-N. I'm sure there's be a lot of people doing yes, that Yes, right the card deck. <laughs> it's, it's awesome, and it's fun. Cool, cool. Absolutely. So. And uh, any other things that you specialize in that uh, people could maybe reach out to you for, maybe future service in case they'd be interested and kind of like the way your style is? Sure. 
Now, what we find in couples therapy is that everybody brings to the table their own backgrounds and histories. Yeah. And sometimes, I mean, they don't have to be traumatic or anything like that, but sometimes just the small differences can create communication problems. And being able to work some of that through and help the other party slow down a little bit just to look at it from somebody else's, the other person's perspective is extremely helpful. That being said, I also do couples therapy with couples who have experienced trauma in their own backgrounds. And so oftentimes you'll get into a relationship and you'll get upset with your spouse or your significant other and it really isn't that big of a deal. And later on, once you've cooled down, you realize, gosh, I kind of over, you know, over exaggerated that situation, overreacted. And then a lot of times what we find in therapy is that that feeling or that emotion goes deeper than in the moment. It's not really about your significant other. It's about some other things that might have happened in the past. And he or she just happened to trigger that emotion. So we deal with helping people regulate their emotions and understand the root of that problem so they can communicate more effectively. So it sounds like understanding other people's points of view is a pretty big important piece in relationships. I'm big on perspective. Mm -hmm. Everybody has their own perspective. We've all heard the story where you can drive by the same accident and see something completely different than the other person saw. It's the same thing. You know, you notice and pick up different things based on our own filters. We all have our own filters. And it's just being able to understand that. Let me hear what you have to say. Hearing and listening is, are two different things. You realize that. Mm. In communication, that is one of the least taught things, if you think about it. You take a speech class, you learn how to stand up and give your speech, you learn how to orate, but you don't really get taught how to listen. And hearing is the physical act of just hearing something, but listening is actually being in tune. Mm -hmm. Eye contact is one of the biggest things that goes away in relationships because we get busy, especially with our phones and everything now. And I have couples that will say, my husband doesn't pay attention to me. He doesn't listen to me. And I'm like, do you guys look at each other? Huh. Yeah, I think so. And then I say, okay, let's, let's talk here. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you see them looking off or, you know, talking over their shoulder. So that's one of the things too, I think that couples can do more of is making sure that they're being attentive to each other and looking at each other and listening with their heart and not necessarily just to respond. Okay. So understanding rather than just reacting. A absolutely. And it's not just about, you know, I want what I want. It's I want what we want, so therefore I have to sometimes take a step back and listen to that other person. And then if that other person can reciprocate, that's a beautiful relationship. But someone has to start. Sure. That's, that's the whole thing. Sometimes people hold their positions uh -huh. and they don't want to listen unless you're going to listen. And I'm always like, okay, well, who's going to start? Who's going to step up? There's a lot of defense rather than offense. Huh? Right. Absolutely. Gotcha, gotcha. That's a good way to put it. Well, Gail, thank you so much for your time. I really yeah. appreciate it. And uh, I'll put all of your contact information below so people can reach Perfect. out in case they're interested in any of your services or any questions. Absolutely. Perfect. Well, thank, thank you. you. All right. Thanks. Hey, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the interview, please subscribe. Leave some feedback in the comments below. And if there's a topic you want me to cover or somebody that you'd like me to interview, just contact me and we'll see what we can do. Thanks.